Welcome to Football Today Team Profiles and Projections. And today we are looking at the Los Angeles Rams, who came in in our power rankings at ninth after a 10 and 7 season and a wild card loss to the, to the Detroit Lions. Last year in offense, they were eighth in scoring, ninth in EPA per play. Defensively, 19th in scoring, 20th in EPA per play. This is head coach Sean McVay's eighth year. Only Mike Tomlin, Jim Harbaugh, or uh, John Harbaugh, and Andy Reid are longer tenured. Mike LaFleur's second season after being fired by the Jets. Funny how that works. And then defensive coordinator Chris Shula's first season uh, after Raheem Morris went to the Falcons. He's been with the Rams, you know, working with the edge, inside linebacker, and DB's group since 2017 and, and was their defensive passing game coordinator. Justin, am I too high on the Rams? They went 10-7 and seven last year and lost a one of the greatest defensive players of all time, yet I still think they're going to be a little better. The Rams are a very, very difficult team to project heading into 2024, Bobby. But I do want to like I, I want to revisit their 2023 because it is worth commending how that football team won 10 games last year, how they played, the players that did step up. But then also, especially you look at it, they were three and six, and they went on a very improbable, I believe, seven and one finish to the season they're three and six and how they started is kind of how everybody thought the year was going to go where cooper cup was in and out injured and matthew stafford even heading into the season had like really major injury question marks and he even got banged up as the season went on we're talking about is this matthew stafford's final year because the roster around him just isn't good so they're three and six and you're thinking to yourself all right you know This could just be the new Rams now. They kind of sold their soul for that Super Bowl, but then they finished the year so freaking strong where, Bobby, by the time the regular season ended, I did pick them to win a Super Bowl because it did feel like that could have been a team that was on a destiny run. It unfortunately ended against the Lions, even though I thought Stafford did outduel Jared Goff that game, but this team does deserve a lot of credit for winning 10 games last year, and it went from... Sean McVay could possibly retire really early. Matthew Stafford is last year, is 2023, his final year, where now we're saying to ourselves, you just asked it, could the Rams be better than 10 wins and what they were in 2023, which is a crazy turnaround. Yeah, I'm really high on them, and there's multiple reasons, but it comes down to two big reasons, right? I'm going to simplify it. I believe they have the best head coach in football in Sean McVay. And yep. if you want to argue Andy Reid, okay, then that then I think you have the best head coach in the NFC. And even though I, this guy might not even be top five in the NFL, I, I think Matthew Stafford is the best QB in the NFC, right? Like, t- tell me, like, here's the list of guy, uh, guys in the NFC. Dak, Jalen Hurts, Jared Goff, Jordan Love, Kirk Cousins, Brock Purdy, Geno Smith, Kyler Murray, in no particular order. I... I I'm taking Matthew Stafford versus all of those guys in a one-year basis, right? I think a, most people would probably take Jordan Love long-term, uh, but I'm, I'm I'm taking Stafford over all those guys yeah. for the 2024 season. Yeah, especially in a big game and against good defenses too, which if you look at the, the first half of the season, you know they, they lost to some pretty pretty good defenses and they didn't score a lot of points. But in the second half of the year, when they faced much better defenses, um, like they had from week ten on, the Rams played four pass defenses that ranked above average. The Brown, the the Ravens, the Browns, which I think they barely lost to the Ravens. They went to overtime. The Ravens, the yeah. Browns, the 49ers, and the Saints. Uh, the Rams went three and one in those games, and they averaged twenty nine point three points per game. Um, and they're, I believe, that they're also playing a pretty difficult passing defense schedule this year again. So against these good defenses, I trust that McVay and Stafford are going to get it done. Absolutely. I mean, there's just throws that Stafford makes that really nobody on the list of the NFC quarterbacks list makes except for maybe Jordan Love. Yeah. Um, And and he started making those throws, like those crazy nutso throws. He started making them during that final, you know, that final eight game stretch and after their bye week. I actually I thought he was doing it early in the year, even though it wasn't turning into wins. Like I was, right. I watched some Stafford film, and I was like, "Man, this guy's kind of balling right now." Um, and I, and you know me, Justin. By the way, I have never been like this Stafford, like huge love. Like I, I, I think he's at times been 
like the Super Bowl year, I think he was a little overrated. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he did lead the league and like, yeah, he did really well, but that was when the Rams were like so set up for a quarterback, you know, and, and in Detroit, he suffered and gained from the lack of like attention they got because he suffered because it's like Matthew Stafford did a lot of awesome things and no one really paid attention to it that much, but he also had some really bad moments in Detroit and no one really paid attention to it because it was in Detroit. Um, but let's talk about the Rams as a whole I, and it starts with the passing game of Stafford and like I said I, I do think he's the best QB in the NFC and then you give him Puka Nakua who ninth in receiving last year most all time for a rookie and, and 1,486 yards almost got 1,500 and then this is my biggest worry for the Rams where it could go this could be a team that I'm super high on and then it could end up winning six wins it's the health of Matthew Stafford, yep. one. And even though he missed some games last year, Cooper Cup. You know, he's 31 years old. He had his lowest yards per game since his rookie season in 2017. He's missed 13 games the last two years. And, and listen, I understand Puka took a lot of the yards that Cooper Cup would have gotten, and Coop, and Cup looked really good last year. But he isn't the same player that he was a couple of years ago when he was you know, leading the league in everything. Well, let me even ask you this, Bobby, because Cooper Cup was still 25th in league in yards per route run at 1.86, which I guess for Cooper Cup, that is a legit I mean, he, was, he, was, a legit he won the triple down. crown and almost took the Calvin Johnson uh, record a couple years right. before it's, that. It's a legit, so for Cooper Cup, that is a legit step down, but you had Puka Nakua at 2.59 yards per route run, which was eighth, which was right below Amon Ross St. Brown and then right above A.J. Brown. Right. So I, I guess the question is, I, th- I think Cooper Cup being a wide receiver too is fine, and and is and if he's top thirty, top, and we're talking top twenty five, Cooper Cup yards per route run, that's that's awesome. I, there there were very few wide receiver tandems that were both in the top twenty five last year for both of their teams. So do you? My question is, do you view Puka Nakua as like a legit wide receiver one that can again be top ten in yards per route run and get over a hundred catches and all that jazz? Yeah, well, I mean, and why wouldn't you? I mean, he was awesome last year, right? Like. You you mentioned uh, uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. It feels like very similar to Amon Ross St. Brown, where it's like, does he flash with like some of the traditional stuff that you look at with the best wide receivers in the NFL? And he was, wasn't was a high draft pick. So it's like, are we sure that it's this good? But then in reality, it's like, no, but this wide receiver is much more of a intelligent position than people realize, right? Like you have to, like it's it's so much more about route running and reading coverages and stuff, especially in a in a Sean McVay offense, than it is just being fast um, and being able to you know jump high on the outside, and that's where you, you get the best guys in the NFL who are both. And then you have Puka Nakua, who yeah, so I, I you know fifteen hundred yards is hard to do, right? But I'm expecting twelve hundred at a minimum from him. Right, right. I I I'd agree with that. Um, Especially like you have Cooper Cup, and then after that, like you don't, you know, I mean, I don't think anyone really loves the Rams' options outside of that. You know, with you know Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell. I mean, those guys, the Rams know how to use those guys, but I'm not, I'm not trusting those guys to do a ton for me. No, I mean, they're no, third, I, you know, I, I call yeah. them the others. You, you ever see the TV show Lost? No, I have not. No, but. That's the I, first I call, time that that's been flipped on me, where I haven't seen the thing. No, no, and, and I, you know me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty niche with what I've seen, and especially with, with what I haven't seen. Um, yeah, so I call the the Rams wide receiver three situation right now the uh, the, the others uh, that they they just use them and they're like Demarcus Rod, like they're just effective enough. But the show is Cooper Cup and uh, Puka Nakoa. But it is a question of depth because if you do have one of those guys that does go down. It's a huge issue, and they're probably going to be without Tyler Higby for the majority of the season since he suffered major injuries in the, in the playoff matchup last year. So yeah, so again, this is I'm I am very high on the Rams, but it it does feel like it's hanging on a on a shoestring too because yes. there's very small variables. They don't they don't need a lot of things to go wrong for their season to go wrong. They need like two things to go wrong, mm-hmm. like uh, for it to go wrong. But here's but here's the reason why I'm high because they had Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup last year and Matthew Stafford, right? Ten and seven, lost in the wild card round. 
not a special season. Is I, I do think they got better in all the other areas, right? We're going to talk about the run game right now. Defensively, I want to talk about the loss of Aaron Donald and the additions they made. But the run game, man, I, I think this running game is going to be really, really strong this year. You know, they were 11th, 11th last year in rushing, and, and you have a QB who had 65 yards total, right? So you don't get the QB bump in the total rushing for the year. No. And you look at Kyron Williams, who played 12 games last year. His first six, he averaged 76 per game on 4.7 yards per carry. That's actually not bad. That's pretty good. The last six games, it really exploded, right? 115 yards per game, 5.2 yards per game uh, per, uh, per carry. And then you add Jonah Jackson to this, right? They, you know, they re-signed Kevin Dotson. They're going to move Steve Avila to center. So you really have that interior strength uh, strong. And then I think adding Blake Corum in the third round gives them a number two they didn't have last year. And hell, I think he could I think they should be splitting reps. Like I, I think Blake I really like Blake Corm. I think he got underrated in all this process, but he is a great fit for what the Rams want to do. You know, and those four games without Kyron Williams last year, they did go one and three. Right? Like Royce Freeman wasn't awful, but Daryl Henderson Jr. was just not it. So now they have that RB say Kyron Williams misses games. I I trust Blake Corm a lot more than the other two guys now. You add Jonah Jackson, who's a really good uh, run blocking offensive lineman, and uh, you know you have Puka Naku. You know you have your your receivers who help block. I think this run game is going to be phenomenal this year, and I think they're going to try and put a little less on Stafford's plate in the regular season. But that's going to be really interesting to see how they do that, Bobby, because I I don't know what the personnel looks like tight end wise with Colby Parkinson and you know Davis Allen, Hunter Longer. Some some of the names that are just on the depth chart that are listed with Tyler Higby's out. This is going to be a team, and we know Sean McVay does this. They're going to live out of eleven personnel. They're they're going to. Now the thing that they have going for them is that the receivers block like fullbacks. The receivers block well. You could put Puka Nakua in line, and I think you could feel great about that. But then also they ran so much play action last year, and this is what really helped transform their season. Is that in the first. Nine weeks of the year, their average depth of target on early downs was really high. Sean McVay almost cut that in half while also throwing out towards the sidelines for Matthew Stafford. They really increased the rate at which they threw out to the sidelines, um, and they really increased the rate at which they started doing play action passing and under, in particular, under center play action. So, um, you know, even though they may not have the personnel to, all right, we're going to put 12 personnel, two tight ends out there and run the ball on early downs, and try to help Matthew Stafford out that way. You mentioned that they, they have wide receivers that can block. They have wide receivers that they can trust that can do that. They have more running backs now to get, to help out um, if Kyron Williams goes down since, hey, he was used a lot last year, and it was bad without him in there. So seems like there are answers on this Rams offense. I love moving Steve Avila to center. I love the moves that they made on the offensive line. Um, these guys just got to st- – Everybody's got to stay healthy. There's even some injury questions on that offensive line, too. Yeah, so uh, offensively, if Stafford stays healthy, this should be a team that they should get to the playoffs. And then that's why it's like if, if Stafford if Stafford stays healthy, they should get to the playoffs. And then you get to the playoffs, man, and I just I trust McVay and Stafford more than I do basically anyone else that's not named San, the San Francisco 49ers. Right. Right. I agree with you. You know? Um, so, but let's talk about them defensively. And this is where I'm a, I'm a little worried about them because there's things I, I love that they did, right? You know, uh, and it starts up front. They, uh, you know, you have your second year players in Kobe Turner, Kobe Turner and Byron Young. Then you add your rookies, Jared Verse. I love that draft pick. I don't love that they traded up for Braden Fisk, uh, the way as much as they did, but I do acknowledge that. was aggressive, that Braden- right? Yeah, I, th- I think it was a little over aggressive for a player like Braden Fist, but it's he's going to be a productive player in that defense. So you look at the second year guys. You know, Kobe Turner was 17th in total sacks, hits, and pressures for defensive tackles, and third in sacks, 16th in pressure percentage, 19th in win rate. Like I think he he'll be you know just as good or better. I worry about Byron Young. Because he was 34th in total sack system pressures for edge gash, right? That's really freaking good for a rookie. 75th in pressure percentage, 86th in win rate out of 120 yeah, guys. not very good. I, I There could be regression there. And the question with Kobe Turner is how, how 
Aaron Donald gets got so much attention, gets so much attention and wins. What happens without Aaron Donald gone? And that's that's another worry I have for this team is like, what does this front look like? But I love Jared Verse. I thought he was my edge one in this class. Uh, I thought I didn't I didn't think he should have dropped lower than eighth overall in the draft. Falcons, idiots. <laughs> um, and Braden Fisk, I think is gonna be is gonna be a useful player in that defense. Well, and, and honestly, I don't know much about Chris Shula, right? I'm not the biggest Raheem Morris fan. I love his background. Like he's been with the Rams throughout through all this time, right? Through Staley, um, even uh, you know Wade Phillips. Um, he's worked with the edge group, the inside linebacker group, the DBs group, and he's been the defensive pass game coordinator. That's a nice little like he kind of understands how this all fits type of resume. But I, again, I'm not going to tell you how good Chris Shula is going to be without actually watching him. Um, but that, what, what is your expectations for this front? Because it's, 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 it's all rookies and second year players. I don't know because Aaron Donald is, you know, Hey, Hey, let's, let's just say a sentence that won't offend anybody. I think Aaron Donald is, is a top five defensive player of all time. Is that fair to say? Oh yeah. That's easy to say. And especially coming from the interior to do it so well for so long. And, you know, you would look at those win. The, the win rate charts and the double team rate charts that uh, Seth Walder puts out every year, you know, every every couple of weeks. And you have Aaron Donald on his own stratosphere of having a double team rate of of so high, but a win rate of, of higher than anybody else, even the ones that are getting single teamed all the time. It, it's crazy, man. So I, I don't, you're right. Well, I, I can't analyze what the impact is going to be without him because it's so rare to see a player like him leave. And not only leave, but he left early. Like it's not like he had this regression, this crazy regression over the last two, three years of his career, and the Rams are transitioning on without him. No, Aaron Donald can come back right now and play ball better than anybody else and still contribute to the Rams. So uh I will say though, like I do not think that Byron Young is is going to get the same sack production. Uh Colby Turner will see. I love Jared Verse. I really wanted uh, By- uh Byron Murphy to make his way. Uh, to uh, to L.A. That was like my dream scenario is, hey, you know, you're not going to be Aaron Donald, but I think you're going to be dynamic enough to kind of kind of carry on the torch in some way. So I love Jared Verse, the fit for, the fit with Jared Verse. I think that's a great little consolation prize for the Rams. It's not even a consolation prize. Really I'd rather have Verse than Byron Murphy. Really? For the for this team? OK, uh, I guess it's more of a premium position, the edge rusher. But uh, that was my dream pre-draft is, is by, I thought Verse was going to go before. So you know, we don't want it's not a, it's not a. Yeah, prize. we we all we I figured Verse would go a little yeah. earlier. But you want to know what um, Bobby like they were even like, weren't they middle of the pack in sacks and a little, probably a little bit below in sacks. And then I think maybe even a little bit below middle of the pack and pressure rate. I, I think they're going to be in the 20s. That's, that's yeah, they weren't they weren't a great. They they weren't a great pass defense last year, and, and you know the Ernest Jones at linebacker is one of the best pa- like pass rushing stack linebackers. There is. He had the most total and sack his and pressure six and win rate. Um, here's where I I do think there's going to be improvement. I think the, I think the secondary again got to do the stupid fucking if healthy thing, but their pass defense was their weakest point, and I love the additions that they made. Now Tre'Davious White is coming off of an Achilles tear, right? That's that's a huge question mark. But Tre'Davious White's a really good corner. Then you add Darius Williams, who is a Darius really Williams. good cover corner, and there's familiarity there. You know, I, I think his best years were with the Rams, and I'm so excited for the Cam and Cam show at safety. You know, you have Cam Curl, mm-hmm. who's you know plays primarily in the box, and then Cam Kitchens, dude. Like I loved him. He was my safety one in this draft class, right? Safety one, and. He has progressed so quickly with them that if the Rams in their second preseason game said, you don't need to play, you're a starter, this you're with crazy. the starters, you don't need to play. Like he's made great and he's so versatile. I, I think that's going to be a note. Like, you know, you think of what they got out of their 2023 draft class and it makes me feel so good about that Cam Kinchins pick that I just think, I think that secondary is going to be much improved. The pass rush, like you said, it's going to be a question. How much are they getting out of their rookies? And you know, do they do they have a guy who can just go out and dominate? That's a huge question mark. Kobe Turner was really good for them, but I just I really like how I mean they just they they changed their entire secondary outside of nickel corner. Is Cam Kinchins your X factor? 
No, I don't put rookies as X factors. Ah, boo. He would have been a good one. Um, yeah, man. I, I like Darius Williams from the standpoint of she makes plays on the football. Like more than more than a lot of corners that I've seen. Like with Oh, he's def- good, dude. Pass deflections. I he's he's short, right? Isn't he really short? Yeah, I think he's like five, like five nine, five. Like 10. he has slot corner size, but he plays outside and he just makes plays on the football, man. And he's he's gone to places like you know L.A. and and Jacksonville, and he's been good where he's where he's been, and now he's back with the L.A. Rams. So that's great. Um, different faces there. This is a defense though that you know I, I'm not surprised if not a lot of people have a ton of takes on them because of how young they are. The secondary is going to be very different. You have a new defense coordinator, but then also this is the defensive unit that has the least amount of cap dollars that are going to them. This is number third. They are the number 32 defense in spending this year. Aaron Donald still has a $23 million cap hit. That's the dead money that he's carrying this year, but that's not attached to the current roster. So uh, it's going to be an inter- interesting year with this uh with this, oh, this defense, defense is one of the, like, Things I'm looking for in the first three games of the year, it's like, all right, Rams defense. Like, how 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 is this defense looking? Because it can, it could be really bad. You know, like they were what 19th last year and scoring 20th heap per play, and they lost. You know, a top three defensive player of all time. Yeah, they lost a Hall of Famer. Yeah, like uh, the easiest Hall of Famer we can ever put in the freaking Hall of Fame. Um, so again, it's very young. Let's go through the new additions and loss. They added Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he's suspended. Jonah Jackson. I also think Darius. he may get cut. By the way, I wouldn't be mad if they cut him. Anyways, they, you know, they did draft Stetson Bennett in the fourth round, even though he had an awful preseason. Didn't he? Didn't he play? Didn't Stetson Bennett the first game play from start to finish? I don't know, but I think he threw like four interceptions against the. Cow- I, I no, I think he did against. It was, if it was against the Cowboys and he threw four interceptions, I think Stetson Bennett played start to finish that game. Jonah Jackson, Darius Williams, Tredavious White, and Cam Curl. They lost Carson Wentz, Royce Freeman, Daryl Henderson, Aaron Donald, ever heard of him, Akello, uh, uh, Witherspoon, Darion Kendrick, and Jordan Fuller. The draft class is another reason. I, I freaking love this class so much. 119, Jared Verse. Great pick. 239, Braden Fist. Not my favorite pick in the world, but he's going to be productive for them. 383, Blake Horn. 399, Cam Kinchin. Mm. woo 5154, Brennan Jackson. I'll be honest, I'm not familiar with him. 6196, Tyler Davis, the defense stack out of Clemson. Uh, a kicker, Joshua Cardi, also in the sixth round. They had four sixth round picks. Jordan Whittington, Justin, six, uh, round six pick 217. Bo Limmer. Bo Limmer. Our boy, Bo Limmer. And then uh, KT Levinson in the seventh round. I, I, I think those first four guys are going to start or produ- uh, you know contribute a lot. And I, I think we're not going to have the same impact as the last class. That's basically impossible to do. But I do think we'll look back at the Rams draft class after the year and be like, man, those guys came in and contributed right away. I agree. That's one of the it's one of the best top 100s that we that I think we saw from this year's class. Absolutely. Uh, who is your X Factor? Uh, my X Factor, it's going to be Cooper Cup. Oh, Cooper Cup. Yeah, mine's Byron Young. Nice, just like nice. put put up some production, right? Yeah, like don't 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 have that rookie year and then just totally fizzle out. And you know, when we look back at stats, I'm like, oh yeah, remember that Byron Young guy from the Senior Bowl? He had like a good rookie year. Never, you know, when he signs a vet minimum contract with our favorite team in like 2029, uh, I was like, he did have a good rookie year. Um. <laughs> So don't 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 be that guy, Byron Young. That's why he's my X factor. Over under eight and a half wins. Dude, this feels like an easy over. And but it's be- a trap over because of how they're like just barely held together. Yeah, and it a calendar year ago, Bobby. You know, I started off the TPP by saying this, but there was some scary, and I'm talking about scary Matt Stafford injury stuff, like some stuff with the spine. Spinal stuff. Yeah. Spinal. He was, he was going to retire. He was going. Last year was going to be his last year. And Puka Nakua saved. I, I'm partially sure. I 100 percent sure of saved Matt Stafford's career, and kind of sure about Sean McVay, because Sean McVay was even poking his toe in the water of, 
hey, let me just go call some TV games a couple times a year and get paid a shit ton of money. I think he was thinking about that, how, how that life could look for him. Um, and that life may be closer than we think. But I'm going over because I hate predicting injuries. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I hate predicting downside. So, I, hey, I'll, I'll I'll predict downside. But I'm not going to predict injuries. I'm going over with the Los Angeles Rams. So appreciate you guys listening. And also, that I want to say one more thing. One more thing. Are you shocked if the Rams win the NFC West this year? Yes, because the 49ers yep. have a, just a juggernaut roster. I'm starting I'd be to, more shocked that they win the NFC West than then when the than they win the Super Bowl. Okay. Does I'm that make sense? To, Does that I'm make st- sense? I'm starting to fade a little bit the 49ers cuz I, I I think, you know, ironically enough, I'm fading them because of their health even though the Rams are way more fragile than the 49ers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just the 49ers have the talent to get you through a regular season. I mean, the 49ers are my number 1 team in the NFL. Um uh so that is the Los Angeles Rams and this is football today.